the idea is that if you if a photon has uh, some mass, we normally assume that it has zero mass. But if it does have mass, you have to uh, change the Maxwell's equations a little bit. So they become Maxwell Proca uh, equations. And the, it's a very well-known system of equations that you can find, for example, in the famous book by David Jackson on electrodynamics. So once you modify these equations, you have to see how plasma behaves, and that's exactly what Professor Rutov has done. Uh, he sort of derived the consequences of a finite mass and, and compared with precision measurements done by the spacecraft, and from there was able to set this uh, limit. We worked um, on this uh, for several hours a day. Well, the, this paper is a result of this. Understand the mass, the uh, mass of a photon is so small that is completely negligible, uh, you know, on astronomical scale. So it's not the, the mass itself, it's not the gravitational force, but uh, it's just what I said, it's the modification of electromagnetic forces. We were able to get uh, the forces of magnitudes that are exactly what you need, basically, uh, to reproduce the anomalous rotation curves. You know, the plasma is structured in the in the galaxy, but under some reasonable assumptions, you easily get these extra forces that are needed. And so we were very excited about this, of course, uh, because maybe this is, we thought maybe this could be an explanation for the dark matter on the galactic scale, right? If you can explain the uh, rotation curves. I think it's very important under the situation where um, we don't know what dark matter is um, uh, really to, to keep many options open and, and think about different ideas. And that was sort of an attempt in that direction. Dr. Budker went on to explain that due to some of the peculiar velocities of the older stars in their model, the lack of which they see in the observations of the known cosmos, their idea of light effects on plasma cannot be the lone answer to the dark matter problem. But he did go on to explain why it is important to include it in the larger equation and why he believes there will be many answers to the dark matter problem, not just one. Uh, Takeaway message, we uh, fulfilled uh, our goal, basically. We, we just wanted really to bring this into the menu, so to say, of considerations. But of course, you know the reason um, uh, why um, it may be hard uh, to, to bring just one thing to to explain the uh, dark matter, for example, is because uh, it shows up on uh, such uh, different spatial scales, uh, starting from galaxies and then galaxy clusters and then gravitational lensing and all the way to the, uh, the formation of the uh, structure in the universe where it seems to be necessary and, uh, and, and uh, the explanation of uh, the properties of the uh, cosmic microwave background.